Hi again YouTube, my name is Simon Sniped and welcome to the channel. I've been putting off this video for quite some time and after an extensive session of info digging and brainstorming with other experienced players, finally I think we're ready to do this. I want to first thank Dehyun, Astral, Ash of Cinders and everyone on Discord for helping me complete this guide. So in this video, I will be showing you how you should be managing your gears, what you should be investing in and where you can get them, and a little bit of tips and tricks along the side. In case you are watching this video in the far future, please take note that the information might be outdated and if it is, my future self probably will make a video on it. Probably. Now that we have got that out of the way, let's get into it. So let's start off with the gear types available to us at this point in the game. Since it's a guide to help your gear progression, I will not be mentioning anything below T5, unique equipment, and the seasonal gears. For T6 gears, we have the ground damage mace type, the damage resistant Gordius type, the damage resistant hummingbird weapons, raid gears, and the common craftables, the Dante's type. Other than the Dante's gear, each of these gears have their own unique fixed substat. The mace has ground damage, Gordius and hummingbird have damage resistance, and raid gears have crit damage. Among these sets, Mace, Gorgias, and Hummingbird can only be bought from shops, and there are only a fixed amount of these that you can buy. On the screen right now, I have consolidated which parts are available in different shops, and generally speaking, for Countess, you can have up to 6 weapons, armors, and crowns, 4 Gorgias crowns, and 2 Gorgias movements with 2 Hummingbird weapons. For Soldiers, you'll have 3 Mace weapons, armors, and scopes, 4 Gordius Scopes, and 2 Gordius Exosuits. Same applies for Max with the Scope and Exosuit equivalent. So, in general, you can basically build 2 Defense Focus Hummingbird and Gordius sets, 3 Maze sets, and 1 Maze mixed with Gordius Accessory set. After that, you'll have another 3 Floating Maze weapons and 1 Floating Maze armor that doesn't fit into anywhere just yet. Other than the shops, clearing certain stages in challenge mode also rewards you with T6 pieces. As of the recording of this video, we are able to get one piece of Soldier and Mech Maze Armor and Scope, one piece of Gordius Exosuit and Scope, and one Gordius Crown and Movement for Counters. Now that you know how many sets we can make from the shop, you can plan which part to buy according to your current progression. Moving on, let's talk about the sets that are potentially good for each type of gear. Due to the limited resources of silver and gold binaries, you might want to hold on to sets or substats that may still prove to be useful. For maze weapons and crowns, attack speed, attack, and crit damage sets are all great to have. As for maze case or armor, you'll want to have HP or cooldown reduction sets. For these accessories and hummingbird weapon, you'll want HP or cooldown reduction. As the end goal of your gear progression, these are the 4 complete ideal sets that you want to build. These sets should only be using T6 gears as the ceiling for their substats are the highest and can be tuned with a wider variety of substat choices. For the first tank set, you want either melee or ranged damage resistance on your weapon, and the same type of damage resistance on your accessories. It allows the set to snowball a significant amount of resistance to a particular type of damage rather than spreading it really really thin all over the place. For the second tank set with Gordius Crowns, you want skill haste instead of damage resistance due to the fact that these will work best on off tanks or strikers in general. Here are a few important tips regarding binaries. Number 1. Focus on a single gear set first. Number 2. If you get a potentially good set, stop tuning and buy a new piece before you tune the next one. Number 3. Never spend any binaries to change sets or substats for Raid and Dante gears. Number 4. Silver binaries are farmable through dispatch, supply operations and events. Number 5. Gold binaries are mostly from events as a free-to-play. If you have extra quads, you can purchase them during the shop resets. Moving on to the next segment, let's talk about the substats. As a general rule of thumb, skill haste will almost never go wrong on any piece of maze gear. 
Other options you want to consider would be any of the anti-roll damage stats, for example, anti-striker damage, anti-defender damage, or even crit damage, depending on who is using the gear. However, what you want to avoid is all types of raw stats. For your Gordius accessories, the ideal substat would be anti-melee damage resistance for crowns and anti-range damage resistance for movements. And the second best substats for them would be skill haste. In the event that you are not able to bump into any of those substats I just mentioned, any damage resist substat is also acceptable temporarily. Up to this point, these gears you will be working towards can be universally used for both PvE and PvP. However, on the side, you should always continue to craft Dante gears in the HQ and consistently farm for raid gears to provide your other units with the best gears possible. They also serve as great replacements during your journey to buy those T6 gears. And that's it for this gear guide video. I hope you were able to know what you'd like to do with your gears after watching this video. And although I also know there are information that's not included to reduce the chances of confusion, feel free to leave any question you have in the comment section below. Until the next video, you have a good one. Bye.